Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm Georgia Manane, Community Manager at the IMI, and I would like to introduce you to Stuart Tag and Siti Abdullah from Brembo Solutions, who will be delivering a presentation for us today. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to go through some housekeeping rules. So um, if you can um, put all questions in the Q&A function here, that would be brilliant because then at the end we have a uh, designated 10 uh, 15 minutes to go through uh, your questions and anything you would like to share um, this meeting is being recorded and will be available uh, for next week um, you will be emailed uh, notifying you of uh, the recording and a link to our feedback survey Perfect. OK, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to City and Stuart for their uh, presentation on modern day braking systems and technology. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, City and I would like to thank you for taking your, uh, some time out of your day uh, to listen to this presentation. We know you're very busy, so thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll crack off in, in uh, Tell you about something to do with Brembo. So here at Brembo, we, we manufacture all braking items from discs to pads to calipers, hoses, fluid, um, with a complete systems manufacturer. Uh, and this applies to all genres, uh, cars, HGV, motorcycles, racing, um, everything. Uh, I hope the city will click on the slides. So as you may or may not be aware of how long Brembo has been going, 60 years uh, we celebrate this year, um, which is, uh, is quite something that we're proud of. So um, yeah, doing well. Into the next. Uh, as Brembo, we're a global company and supplies all of its products far and wide. Um, we have industrial sites and commercial sites along with our R&D departments across the globe. Uh, with the aim to providing uh, a more slick uh, supply chain. Yeah, again, the click of blue. So uh, as probably, uh, this is our most recognizable wing of the business, which is our racing department. Um, and with our tier one racing pedigree means we can utilize and experience um, everything that we use in, in that area of the business really, um, uh, to the design and just the manufacture of the retail vehicles. Um, and we can pass that on through into the garages. Uh, we'll never stop competing, as you know, but it's in Brembo's DNA. Um, and now as a company, we have over 500 world titles to our name. Uh, something that uh, is it's very impressive, something that we've done really well. Uh, our quality department is second to none. Uh, and we keep a tight handle on this. Uh, the process means that any issues that arise, we stamp out at source, um, enabling uh, to, the product to be faultless going into the market where you see it across your garage floor. Uh, Brembo will always strive to be number one as a stature of the breaking, uh, as the best breaking brand in, in the business by constantly raising the bar. Um, one of our main ways to achieve this is to constantly reinvest in our research and development. Uh, more than 10% of our turnover is reinvested into the, the research and design. Uh, a million kilometers for perfect braking, quite a good headline. Uh, this is a testing procedure, most effective way that we find to achieve the perfect braking. Uh, to put that into context, the million kilometers, that's 25 times around the earth. Brembo tests more <clears throat> than on the racetrack and the road that you, you may think we do. We also test in our labs, our dyno benches, and this is 550 hours of testing that has gone into creating the perfect braking solution. So this has been our uh, tagline for many of years and something that I constantly use every day. Every, do, every car deserves Brembo, and it certainly does. Um, Stereotyping the driver is, a, is one big mistake. From a Ferrari to a Fiat 500, we believe that um, every car deserves Brembo to be fitted. Uh, so now I'll pass on <coughs> to City, my colleague, and she'll go a bit more into in depth of the, of the Brembo braking system. Thank you, Stuart, for that. 
um, for this presentation, just to facilitate the, um, the presentation, um, I might be experiencing delays if I have my video. So if you don't mind, I'll take my video off and just leave the presentation uh, on the screen. Okay. So thanks again, everyone, for taking the time out to attend this webinar. Special thanks to Georgia from the IMI for inviting us. Uh, let me introduce myself and tell you a bit about myself. Um, so my name is Siti from Brembo, and I am one of the area managers. Um, although I've only been with Brembo for 18 months, I have had a career that's been filled with friction, but in a good way. So before working for Brembo, I was working for a non-original equipment brake supplier in a technical support role. Uh, I've worked for a part supplier providing technical support for a completely different friction product, um, clutches if you're interested, and started my career in automotive in an independent garage. I'm really excited to share with you today some insightful information involved in creating the formula for perfect braking. So today, I will explain the requirements of producing efficient brakes, highlight the technology solutions in the form of preventative measures to provide optimum comfort in braking, and provide you with some key points to follow as part of maintenance to complete that formula for perfect braking. So without further ado, I'll go straight in. So in a vehicle, there are many components that keeps the driver safe to control the vehicle or to prevent an accident. So on this slide here, I uh, listed the active safety components of a vehicle that allows for the driver to, to do both. But they're also like passive components that reduce the negative effects of an accident, like your airbags, uh, your seat belts. But your tires and your brakes, they're arguably two of the most important safety components of a vehicle. And these two components fundamentally rely on each other to work at maximum efficiency. Of course, it goes deeper than this. Like the suspension allows the tire to maintain contact with the road, and this maintains control and allows for consistent speed reduction. Even that steering knuckle, it plays an important role because if this component failure at any real speed, it will cause that vehicle to lose control with disastrous results. And as much as I love geeking out about this, we only have 45 minutes, so we will focus on the braking systems. So the primary function of a braking system is to reduce the speed and stop a vehicle in a motion that's in controlled, stable, and in effective manner. And the secondary function is to keep the vehicle immobile while it's stopped. And it takes a lot more power to stop a vehicle than it does to make it go. And this is because the braking time is a lot shorter than the acceleration time. Therefore, in a vehicle, that braking system must be a lot more powerful than the engine. So in like in a normal car, the power of the braking systems can be 10 times greater than the engine output. And of course, this value varies uh, depending on what the vehicle's been used for. But let's take like an average medium-sized car accelerating from 0 to 60 miles per hour. And this calls for a power rating of about 90 kilowatts, which is about 120 horsepower, and perhaps an acceleration time of about 10 seconds. But let's look at the braking of the same car that needs to go from 60 miles per hour to a dead stop. And to stop that car in three seconds, we need a power rating of 300 kilowatts, which is about 400 horsepower that braking system must stop the vehicle in the shortest possible distance and under any conditions, which means that the design and manufacturing requirements are very demanding. There are several parameters of the vehicle, such as the weight and the specifications of the surrounding parts that need to be taken into account. So as an OE manufacturer, we work with vehicle manufacturers that provide us with this exact information to produce the safest braking systems for the vehicle. And it's using this information that we design the brake components of the exact type and dimension for optimum performance while maintaining the utmost level of comforts when braking without sacrificing any friction coefficients. Because I'm sure that you'll agree with me, 
that the driver is not just going to be satisfied with brakes with the safest braking distance, the demand for their brakes to be smooth and free of noise when braking. So in the next section, we will explore the technologies and the ingenious solutions used in preventing NVH. However, first, to prevent it, we need to understand what it is and how it is caused. So NVH is defined as noise, vibration, and harshness. And NVH control is one of the major design objectives in automotive, since NVH affects ride quality, drivability, and also occupant comfort. And with the decrease of internal combustion engines, there's no longer that trusted engine to mask underlying noises that might not have been noticed before. And yes, of course, it is important to remember that if the surrounding components are not functioning correctly due to wear or damage, this can severely increase NVH, but these faults are often mistaken for brake-related issues. So the examples of NVH commonly experienced in braking systems, they can range from their really annoying high-pitched squeal uh, to vibration and harshness with that uncomfortable sensation. But most of these times, these issues, they rear their head when braking. But there are instances that this can be experienced without the brakes being applied. And this usually occurs with mechanical defects of components through wear and tear. But the most complicated part of the process is to prevent the natural occurrence of NVH before any signs of wear. And to reduce NVH, as you can see from this slide, there are several factors that the engineers need to bear in mind when designing the brakes of a vehicle. So they need to bear in mind not only the components of the braking systems, but the surrounding components, how they perform or react when in motion, exposed to heat and what happens to them through normal wear and tear. So they need to factor in that these elements are variable subject to the amount of use or exposure to the environment. So it's important to bear in mind that although the design of the brake component will reduce NVH when components are new, there are still preventative measures that need to be followed to prevent NVH as the components age. So let's move on to how NVH is produced in order to better understand how to reduce it. So noise, vibration, and harshness are closely related to each other in the way that they are produced. Noise is unwanted sound, and sound is produced by vibrating objects. So different things make different vibrations when they make contact, and this is why you hear high or low notes the slower the vibration or lower the frequency. And this can be felt more like a sensation, like a judder, the lower the frequency is. But as that frequency increases, it would manifest itself into like a low pitch noise, like a groan, a moan, or a howl. And things that vibrate quicker or with a higher frequency make smaller waves in the air. And that sounds to us like a high pitch note. So low frequency vibrations form due to the like natural characteristics of the brake disc material when it's exposed to heat or when it's in motion. The cause of judder from a brake disc is due to a thermoelastic deformation on the disc. And in plain English, what that means is the brake discs, they're made mostly out of metal. And when metals are exposed to heat, their natural characteristics would cause them to expand, but also flex slightly. So like the moving image on this slide, it gives you an exaggerated example of the amount of flex that the brake disc can experience when it's exposed to heat. And from these movements, there are two types of judders that can be experienced. So cold judder occurs during braking caused by geometrical irregularities due to perhaps incorrect machining, uh, mounting of that brake disc with excessive lateral runout, uneven wear of the components, or even uh, uneven friction. And hot judder is experienced during braking caused by the formation of like that dark hot spots that you see, or the bluing on the discs. And these are caused by transformation of the cast iron itself into seminite due to overheating or by localized deposits of friction material. And in instances where the vibration is quicker 
or of a higher frequency, and this results in the annoying squealing noises that no one likes to hear. So the higher frequency vibrations can be caused by dynamic instability that occurs at one or more of the natural frequencies of that brake system. The low frequency squeal comes from the whole quarter of the vehicle and not only from the brake systems itself, but can come from the suspension as a result of like components starting to wear. Um, but this can also quickly manifest itself into a judging sensation with worsened wear. The high frequency squeal is related to the contact between the pad and the brake disc. And when that pad slides against the braking surface of the disc, this leads to minute fluctuations or movements in the friction force itself. And this can then resonate with the components around the friction materials. And it further amplifies the fluctuations in friction force and generates noise. When that brake pad does not move in harmony with the caliper piston, the result is an increase in noise vibration or harshness. So I hope from this short little section that you can see that NVH reduction is really complicated as there are multiple factors to bear in mind when designing brake components that are not only safe, but provide the required comfort levels in a modern vehicle. And let me share with you some of the ingenious solutions that are present in the current brake system. Let's start with that brake disc. First of all, the material that is used. Brake discs have always been made in cast iron. And to this day, majority of the cars on the road use this material, aside perhaps from like the supercars that use carbon ceramic materials instead. So the term cast iron can include several types of variants that differ not only in chemical composition, but in performance. Brembo uses more than 40 different variants of cast iron to reduce hot and cold jada by using cast iron with a high carbon content that has different elasticity to improve damping. The surface of the brake disc must be smooth to prevent pad vibration as it makes contact and corrosion will affect this. So to prevent corrosion of the brake discs before it's being fitted to the vehicle, many suppliers would use like a geomet silver coating that needs to be completely removed in a recommended prolonged bedding in process. So if the prolonged bedding in process is not done thoroughly and that coating is not fully removed, the remnants of it can embed itself into the friction material of the brake pad. And when it makes contact with the brake disc, it will cause a terrible screeching noise. To prevent this, Brembo brake discs are finished with a UV paint treatment that provides a smoother finish with no risk of the remnants embedding itself while only requiring the standard amount of bedding in. So every brake disc is individually tested to ensure that it can withstand braking forces. But besides strength, the physical structure of that brake disc must be in tolerance. When a disc is brand new, the maximum tolerance of runout measurement and disc thickness variation is lesser than 50 to 80% the width of a human hair. And just in case if you're curious, the human hair is about 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns. And these measurements, they must be this exact to prevent brake torque variation that would replicate that judder symptom. The way the disc is connected together in terms of the hat to the braking surface can also influence NVH. There has been innovation that has been patented by Brembo that's more commonly known as the two-piece brake discs. And this clever technology not only offers a 30% weight saving on the unsprung mass by the hat being manufactured in aluminium, but it provides like flexibility of that braking surface without warping the hat. So the braking surface can be attached to the hat by a fastening bushing to connect the two parts to allow the braking surface to expand without deforming. But another alternative is joining the two surfaces together by co-casting. And these are all patented solutions and must not be swapped with a single piece brake this, because doing this can affect the overall stability by increasing the weight of the unsprung mass and decrease the NVH damping effect without the before mentioned technology. 
But NVH prevention goes further than just the surface of the brake disc. The internal designs that cannot be seen sometimes unless you cut that disc open is a lot more complex due to the ventilation chambers that's used inside to dissipate heat as quickly as possible. The shape and the distribution of the pillars creates air circulation inside the ventilation chamber. And this allows for greater heat removal, as well as an increased resistance by up to 40% against the formation of cracks. On Brembo's latest generation of brake disc is the, and this is a bit of a mouthful, the patented pillar ventilation technology or PVT for simple, for simpleness. And where the pillars have different geometry are uh, arranged along three rings along the braking surface. And this design is not available to be replicated. And as you can see from this slide, the brake disc has evolved and is now compacted with several features to provide you with not only NVH reduction, but also weight reduction. And using the standard disc to save on costs will not provide the vehicle with NVH solution it requires, but more concerningly, it will also affect the overall stability of that vehicle. Therefore, this is crucial to note when you're offered a perceived matching quality brake disc. We also go the extra step with providing you the complete solution. Like wheels, a brake disc must be balanced to ensure that the weight of the disc is even as it's turned. Because if it's unbalanced, not only will it affect the comfort of the occupant of the car, but it'll cause premature wearing of the surrounding parts. So if you've ever wondered what that little sliver that's etched onto the edge of the brake disc is for, this is to ensure that the brake disc is balanced because rather than adding weight to it like on a wheel, the weight is taken off. But not all brake discs need this correction. So this little sliver might not be found in all brake discs. But what is this extra step that I've just referred to? To ensure that that brake disc is perfectly balanced, if the application has a grub screw, it is balanced with that grub screw, then provided together with that brake disc. So the NVH prevention is just as fascinating in the design of brake pads. And for its brake pads, Brembo uses more than 100 different compounds designed to offer the most suitable solution for each type of vehicle and driving style in terms of both performance and comfort. And when we are developing the compounds, there are more than 20 different properties to be considered. And to have just one type of compound across all applications would just not cut it. A pad for a Fiesta will have very different requirements to a pad for a BMW 3 Series. Therefore, when we design and manufacture a pad, it will be the exact pad for the application. When you design a pad, there needs to be like a balance on performance and comfort. So if you take a look at like high friction brake pads that's used for racing purposes, this creates high energy at the friction intersurface and it can lead to more brake squeal which will not be acceptable for normal everyday situations. And our tribologists, they have innovative ways of engineering out the noises audible to the human ear by knowing the exact raw material to use without compromising on performance by adding like graphite and other elements to create the damping effect. However, just like the brake disc, it's not only enough to focus on the materials that is used, the whole of the pad needs to be taken into account. So by changing the shape of the pad, by introducing chamfers, it controls how the edge of the pad contacts the brake disc and helps prevent noise. If you've got like a really pointed edge uh, of the pad that clamps onto that brake disc, that action can be quite harsh. The angled edge makes sure that the largest possible edge of the pad makes contact with the disc when the disc is clamping. So this smoothens out that clamping action. And besides reducing NVH, the other purpose of the chamfer is to induce even pad wear and to prevent the leading edge of that brake pad lifting and being pulled away as it clamps onto that brake disc. If the leading edge of the pad is a sharp pointed edge, it increases the tendency to grab and bounce more than if the leading edge is chamfered. And this is why most premium brake pads have got that chamfered edge. 
and pads may also have like a slot down the middle to increase flexibility and cooling. And they've got a triple duty to perform. So first they divide the surface into two or three smaller areas, depending on the size of the pad. And this reduces thermal deformation. Due to heat, pads will bend and flex on their backing plates. So if a solid piece of friction material is used on a pad that flexes quite a bit, it can lead to excessive NBH and even chunking of that friction material. Secondly, the slots break the friction material into separate sections to change the frequency, the natural frequency of the pad as it makes contact with that brake disc. But lastly, the slots also allow for the gases and the debris from the pad to escape that are generated during braking. The cause of brake squeal has commonly been blamed as to how rough or grabby the first surface of that friction material is. And although that is partially correct, the other causes of squeal is brake pad oscillations. And what this is, is the tiny but rapid movement from the pad while it's in motion that's not visible to the eye. Uh, when the pad moves, it would then collide with the pistons or caliper fingers and NVH prevention comes in the form of brake shims. They have the ability to reduce NVH in three different ways. First of all, they prevent and reduce the transmission of vibrational forces and brake chatter, which is achieved with the damping material bonded to the pad assembly. And to ensure that the brake pad moves in harmony with the pistons, some have like adhesive or sticky adhesive or locating marks to locate it correctly within that caliper. And finally, the shims can also act like a thermal barrier to ensure even temperatures across the pad that translates into more consistent braking. Uh, Brembo pads, they've got a multi-layer shim made out of a mixture of different layers of metal and rubber. But even changing the shape of the shim can prevent NVH. Like the pad at the top right-hand corner, just be aware that some of these shims, they've got like a crescent or a half moon cutout. And this allows the pistons to push the brake pad at a slight angle to turn the whole pad into a chamfer and reducing noise and creating more unified and even pad wear. And we'll cover the correct fitting position later in the later part of this presentation. With the need to like reduce emissions, there have been like a need to reduce the weight of components. But with reducing weight, this also produces extra issues with NVH. So damping weight, which are actually a Brembo patent from the year 2000, adds mass to that braking system and damping out brake noises in the one and a half to the two and a half kilohertz range. And these are only found on like fixed caliper brakes, either attached directly to the pads or the caliper. A huge challenge in NVH prevention is to minimize the vibrations of the components when they're in motion. So if they don't move in harmony with each other, but collide with each other, this can create that unwanted NVH. So this is one of the functions of these spring clips that come in the form like of a metal clip or a wire or like a ribbon component. But these are not only like eye attackers or knuckle gouges. These clips hold the components in place to ensure that the components will move in harmony with each other to prevent them from colliding with surrounding parts, but also return the pads to the rest position after braking when the kickback from the disc is insufficient to do that. At Brembo, we realized that due to the constant exposures to varying temperatures, that these accessories can lose their tensile strength due to the annealing process. To provide you with the most complete solution, most of our brake pads, they come complete with a range of accessories and assembly kits included in that box. So replacing these accessories at every pad replacement is a compulsory servicing method as these fitting kits can lose up to 50% of their tensile strength in only two years. So as mentioned at the start of the presentation, although there is so much innovation packed into the brake disc and pad to prevent NVH, there are still compulsory servicing methods that must be followed to guarantee the perfect break-in. The reason behind this is largely due to the natural deterioration of metals that leads to corrosion. 
The Society of Automotive Engineers, or the SAE, estimates the corrosion rate in automotive to be in similar range to marine environments. And with the current pandemic and the decreased use of vehicles, most owners are still cleaning their vehicles regularly. And without the vehicle being driven to dry the vehicle off, the water and acidic cleaning materials, they trickle down to the lowest point of the car, which is the brakes. And this accelerates that corrosion process. So in this section, we will provide you with some compulsory servicing methods for preventing NVH for optimum braking. Let's start with the brake discs. It is necessary to check the brake discs even if only the pads have been requested to be replaced to avoid NVH symptoms, as these symptoms will appear if these issues are not spotted. So discs that are below their minimum thickness have a reduced mechanical strength, leading to deformation of the brake disc, resulting in the formation of thermal cracks on the braking surface due to the rise in temperature and decreased heat dissipation capacity. And imperfections such as grooves or cracks on the braking surface will contribute to cold jada. One condition that catches people out is excessive DTV. DTV is disc thickness variation, which is a condition where the opposite faces of the brake disc accumulate an extra thickness or brake friction material or thinness due to uneven wear. And when a brake disc develops DTV, it causes brake pedal pulsations during braking. To measure for excessive disc thickness variation, the, need, the disc needs to be measured at eight equidistant points of the braking surface. DTV tolerances can range from 0 to 0 0.01 millimeters to 0 0.03 millimeters, dependent on the application. And if it's not detected and the discs are not replaced, this will cause brake jada, which will be more apparent with the new pads. And before mounting the new brake discs, we need to ensure that it has been that it will be mounted laterally within tolerance, as corrosion buildup of no more than 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns, which can be less than the thickness of a cigarette paper, can alter the lateral uh, runout. So, but remember that the issues with corrosion has been made worse now by all the lockdown cleaning of these vehicles, and these tolerances vary from vehicle to vehicle and can be found on auto data. However, if not specified, this is 0 0.07 millimeters on a brand new brake disc. This measurement requires the use of a dial type indicator gauge. And if it's out of tolerance, it's recommended to clean the surface of the hub to ensure that it is free of corrosion and to take that measurement again with that new brake disc. If it is still out of tolerance, there could be a mechanical issue with the hub. Therefore, a measurement of the hub is recommended. The maximum runout tolerance of the hub is no more than 0 0.01 millimeters. And it is recommended that if the measurement exceeds this, that the hub is replaced. Otherwise, would lay the foundations for excessive lateral runout that will cause excessive DTV in two to 5,000 driven miles. You still need to take a bit of care when you clean the hub, because although there is a need to eliminate all of the corrosion from the surface to prevent excessive lateral runout, uh, the tools that it's used needs to be not too harsh so that they compromise the surface of the hub. You can use the traditional uh, wire brush, but in some cases, this can be like time consuming and will give you arms like Popeye, <laughs> but there are also like brake cleaning tool attachments that can be used with your tools that have got cleaning wheels that are strong enough to remove corrosion, but will not damage the hub surface. Some wire wheels that produce sparks are a definite no-no. And to further protect the hub surface from corrosion from forming, you can protect the surface with a thin layer of non-metallic high temperature grease, but take care not to use too much as it will affect the lateral runout of the brake disc. And we'll, we will elaborate a bit later on the correct type of lubricant to be used for each um, contact point. And cleaning corrosion buildup, it's essential to facilitate the smooth operation of that pad. Corrosion and debris buildup on the carrier will change the size of the gap between the abutment shims and it will prevent that pad from moving freely. 
So the tools used to clean uh, the carriers need to be strong enough to remove all corrosion, but should not compromise the carrier tolerance. So you can get like a caliper file that has been manufactured of soft material that can be used for this purpose. And to further facilitate the smooth operation of the brake pad, we also need to ensure that the surrounding components are in a good condition, cleaned and sufficiently lubricated. So the old school like cheat way of replacing pads where you undo just one slider bolt and swing the caliper is not enough as the whole caliper needs to be removed so that you can thoroughly inspect the slider. The sliders must be in a good condition, so not too corroded and not bent. They must move freely and the boots must not be worn or leaking lubricant and must have sufficient lubricant. But it's also important to use the correct type of lubricant and not one with a petroleum base because this will react with the EPDM rubber boots and it'll cause those boots to swell and they'll obviously leak lubricant over time. So what we recommend for the sliders is a silicon based lubricant perhaps. And the right type of lubricant is imperative in preventing NBH. Um, so using a silicon based lubricant for the sliders will ensure smooth movement and will not react with the EPDM rubber. But if you use the same lubricant on the contact points of the pad, this will not be suitable as it is not washproof. There is no place for a metallic based lubricant in a modern braking system. And in a brake system, there are several contact points that will need to be treated as part of the repair process to ensure free movement. The old school habit within the industry that uses copper grease as uh, the universal lubricant is again a no-no as within the braking environment can result in galvanic corrosion that is further worsened by the contamination of acidic cleaners due to the owner's desires of keeping the alloys or their rims sparkling clean. So the exposed contact points require like a washproof lubricant, usually one of petroleum base, like our Brembo Be Quiet grease. And even before installing the pads, uh, as mentioned previously, that there are many forms of directional pads that can only be fitted in one direction. And this can come in the form of like a wire sensor and the position of fitting can be determined by the length of that sensor. Um, you can have like an asymmetric clip that will have markings to indicate their fitting position. Chamfered pads are also directional and the correct position is with the chamfer or the bigger size chamfer fitted to the leading edge. There are some that have shims that I've mentioned before with that crescent of that half moon cutout that allows the pistons to push in the pad at a slight angle to reduce noise. Um, and this needs to be fitted with the crescent opposing the direction of rotation, as you can see here uh, on this slide. So if the chamfered pads and the shim cutouts are fitted in the wrong direction, this will position that pad incorrectly. And rather than prevent NVH, it will increase it. And if not corrected in the long run, this can actually cause damage to the parts. So the bedding in or the running in process for brakes is also essential for brakes to perform optimally. Your correct breading in guarantees that your new brake pads and discs will work flawlessly together. And the process of bedding in starts on the test drive where the vehicle should be driven at a moderate speed of between 20 to 30 miles per hour. And then the brake should be applied gradually without coming to a complete stop to initiate the material transfer process. The process should be repeated about eight to 10 times and avoid more than a minute between each brake application to maintain the temperatures needed for the bedding in process. But when you hand that vehicle back to the customer, it's essential to advise them as well to brake gradually and to avoid feathering their brakes or heavy braking for about 150 to 200 miles to continue that bedding in process correctly. So bedding in new discs and pads should be done with care to ensure that even material transfer process, because anything that interrupts that process will compromise both braking surfaces and start the foundations of excessive disc thickness variation. So it is advisable to advise your customers that are taking their cars away for their long holidays in August uh, to get their brake service now for this bedding in process to have completed by them. 
Um, I've covered a lot of ground here and given you guys a lot of information. And as a solution provider, Brembo, we found a way of providing this information direct to you to support any one of our, anyone using our products. And how is this possible? Because the innovation does not only stop with that product in the box. Even the packaging that we use for Brembo Breaks provides like useful information um, regarding technical product for the data, in addition to the symbols for international certifications that's required for various markets. There's a QR code that you can scan for fit-in instructions, and this is useful for stuff like the directional brake pad. And there's even a way of confirming the authenticity of the product. So on the brake pads, there's a QR code that is printed on the stickers uh, sealing the box. And while for brake discs, it can be found on the product label together with an unforgeable Brembo hologram. If you scan this with your smartphone, it'll take you to our Brembo Parts website to confirm the authenticity of this. There is so much more information regarding braking technology that is available regarding the current and of course future technology. However, we are very much being restricted by time. Uh, for current technologies, we have an online IMI course that is ready and will be able to be purchased from your factors soon. So please keep asking them for this. But for future technologies, we are excited to attend the first live automotive event since the pandemic. And even more exciting news is that we have the first ever collaboration with another original equipment giant, which is Scheffler, to present on the future of braking and chassis technology. This event will also feature a load of other original equipment manufacturers and speakers with a fountain of knowledge like Frank Massey and Andy Sava, and we really hope to see you there. So as we reach the end of this presentation, I would first of all like to thank all of you for your attention and would like to open up the Q&A to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Stuart and City. You're welcome. Um, as you mentioned, I'd like to open the Q&A. Um, I can see that we have uh, three questions already, which is great. So as we answer them, please be sure to um, submit any questions that you may have for City and Stuart in the Q&A function. Okay. okay, so let's have a look. So one question, the motor industry stock response to NVH is copper slip on the back of the pads and I think Stuart, you would like to answer this live? Yeah, like um, I think if you uh, just bear with us and saw the end of City's presentation, uh, the technical aspect of it, uh, we don't recommend anybody to use copper slip on the braking systems. And as you saw with the maintenance section of City's presentation, uh, we do have something called Brembo Be Quiet, which is a non-metallic paste. Uh, you can buy that through your factors. So it's uh, and, and that again answers his second question there with what is your recommendation to, uh, um, to reduce NVH? Yeah, I mean, like those, the, the question about reducing NVH, um, if we want to like put it quite simply is clean, clean, clean and, and protect the services that are susceptible to like having corrosion on them. Um, so um, the use of like uh, the tools that I mentioned earlier on, because when we go out and see um, issues with juddering or squealing, like Stuart will tell you, most of the cases is the discs being uh, suffering from ex uh, like excessive lateral runout uh, due to corrosion buildup of the hub surface uh, that can be prevented by cleaning it and then protecting it with, uh, with um, a petroleum-based lubricant. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's as simple as that, really. Clean, clean, clean and protect those services. <laughs> so, um, and there's another question here about how does an independent garage become a uh, Brembo expert? Um, you can usually, if you speak to your factors uh, who will have our contact details, and I'm sure that Georgia, will you have our contact details as well uh, available to anyone after this? Then yes, like, they'll, uh, be, they'll be included in the follow-up email that will be sent out with the recording uh, on Monday. Awesome. Cool. So Dan, and once you've got our contact details, if you um, give us an email, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to identify your location in the UK, point you in the direction of your 
uh, nearest factor that we'll, we'll be able to start the process moving. That's not a problem. Cool. Okay. Are there any questions that? Um... We just had got one from um, Haley Pals. Okay. I see that. Yep. So Haley, thanks and hello. So and thanks for your kind words of enjoying great success. So great. So struggling to source calipers for an older alpha. Is there a way of finding parts if the mode of factors cannot source and can this be bought directly? Um, they can't be bought directly through us, but we also do a lot of work with the motor factors um, with um, them sourcing the parts from Italy. It might take a little bit more time than um, your usual parts. However, uh, again, like um, the motor factors do have um, myself and Stuart's contact details. So if they do struggle, um, they can contact us to assist them with this. However, if it's um, some items that are obsolete, then it's not something that we can help you with. I'm really sorry. Again, Hayley, just to interject in City there, mm. um, we have a specialist supplier of mm. Alpha parts. Um, uh, George will be able to give you my contact details and I can put you um, in touch with them. Now, I'm not saying that they will have the direct mm. caliper for this older Alpha. Um, but they stop the Brembo Alpha part, so that's somewhere I can direct you to. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. We just have another question from Dan. Uh, Brembo products, original equipment. Uh, yes, absolutely. We make um, we make braking systems for a large percentage of vehicle manufacturers. Um, and this is quite apparent that you can see like uh, our names uh, clearly displayed, obviously, as um, on, on certain vehicles as well. So, yes, we are certainly original equipment. And then are there any more? Um, not at the moment, but can I just ask, so what sort of things do you kind of see a lot of in terms of questions from customers or people in the industry looking to know more about um, kind of, you know, breaking technology and, and what you do? Um, most, most of it like comes uh, with exactly this really, uh, questions about like NVH because the frustrating thing about NVH is it's not something that happens instantly when there's an issue. Um, because like, um, let's say if you fitted a brake disc that is out of tolerance, that problem will not happen straight away. Um, it will take about two to 5,000 driven miles. And um, if, the, if the underlying issue is not spotted and the disc is just replaced without that hub being cleaned, the problem will come back. Yeah, so um, it's mostly like uh, questions with NVH, what about what about yourself, Stuart? What sort of questions do you get asked? All about noise, isn't it? Mm. Noise on the braking system, and everybody has um, uh, an idea um, about what's causing it. And I think um, uh, the standard answer is they're blaming the products that they've fitted, um, when in actual fact, um, it's, it's nine times out of ten never the uh, never the fault of the parts that you've fitted. It's how it's been fitted, and I hope that uh, the people watching the presentation would have would have taken note of, of of City's maintenance techniques, because if they're followed to the letter, you'll have no problems with the braking system. And we know that um, the garages will have an argument with the customer to end up having the vehicle on the ramp for another hour to inevitably giving the parts for free and the service for free because of the complaint. So if the garages and the mechanics are following um, what we've recommended today from Brembo, that would eradicate any um, you know, problems coming back into the garages. And then we'll see retention um, from the customers in a good way rather than in a bad way. Cool. Thanks, Stuart. Okay, we just got a few more questions. Okay. So are your aftermarket parts the same quality and same material as OE? Stuart, would you like to answer that and I'll answer the next one? So are the aftermarket parts the same quality? Yes, it states in our box. So um, the easiest way to identify OE quality parts or OE parts or whatever the, the question is with OE, 
um, what my recommendation is, is you look at the box, okay? Because on the box, we can't adjust any legalities. So on our box, it will say OE supplier. So anybody that will have an OE supplier will have the same parts. Um, some people put OE equivalent or OE specification, various ideas of OE. So my recommendation there is always look at the box that you're buying because on there is your legalities. And um, from Brembo's perspective, that is the OE supplier. Okay, cool. Um, there's also like a question here about the be quiet piece. Uh, are there recommended intervals for application of this throughout the break's lifetime, or is it just as when as necessary? Um, the be quiet pace that's used every time that the brakes are replaced. So, or if you are servicing the brakes, I know that um, increasingly a lot of garages are offering like a brake service to EV and hybrid vehicles, um, and not because like a uh, the brakes are wearing because of more engine braking, but because of more corrosion buildup. So it's recommended that when you um, take the brakes apart and like start cleaning all the contact points, um, that's that's a good time to like uh, reapply this paste as well to again protect that layer, uh, the that contact point from uh, corrosion from building up, and to facilitate free movement as well of the parts. So, cool. I'm just having a look at some more questions. So Hayley, I've recently completed, oh, it keeps moving because of yeah. coming in. Uh, I've recently completed the online Brembo training. Is there an annual refresher and or test to maintain Brembo expert status? Um, I don't know which online test you've done. So we have two versions at the minute, and that's not entirely true. We had a version that was on our BremboParts.com website, okay? Um, which was a basic understanding of the braking system to enable you to, uh, to contact us. If you've done that, as City was saying earlier, we have a, um, a new, a very much more in-depth IMI training um, that we can offer. It is a course that is paid for through your um, motor factor, as City referred to earlier. It's not quite ready to release because we're just still talking to the, the motor factors about mm -hmm. how to how to see this through to fruition. Um, but yes, there is something, again, I'm just trying to understand which training that she's taken or the uh -huh. mechanics of training, um, but we do have something um, and we will always refresh that course, always. Cool. Um, Dan, I think you've got a question about the Brembo expert again. Um, what I would say to yourself is after this, this session and our contact details are provided to Georgia, please feel free to contact myself or Stuart directly. Uh, myself, actually, preferably, as you are down in the south. And uh, I will contact Please you directly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Um, Adam about are we doing any work to reduce particulate emissions from brake components? Well, I could spend hours geeking out on this. Um, yes, we are. We look at sustainability as uh, one, uh, one massive objective as a solution provider. And there's some really awesome things that they are doing. And believe it or not, I mean, um, just like uh, to touch on the very surface of this, uh, what they're planning to use uh, to reduce brake emissions um, as a base for friction materials on pads is cement. And um, I'd love to discuss a little bit more about this, but then like uh, we will have a lot more of this um, in the future publications from our marketing. So follow us and like um, join us on this, join us on this like journey towards sustainability too. I've also seen um, uh, brake caliper filters mm. just look horrendous. So hopefully yeah. we don't follow that uh, line. But yeah. Yeah, just, to, just to go on from what City was saying is, mm -hmm. follow us, have a look what we're doing because um, Brembo is the, the, you know, the, the brake solutions provider. And um, if anybody's going to do it first, that is certainly going to be with Brembo with our OE heritage. 
Um, it may be something that we start off in motorsport first and to see if it works. And obviously we'll bring that back down into, into the retail world, but yeah, we'll, we'll be doing something for sure. Yeah. I mean, like now as well, uh, I've, I'm not sure where are they in the market, but there are some like pretty fascinating looking like brake discs or the green tip discs that look like a mirror. And that's all again, a part of like uh, reducing, reducing emissions, but follow us on social media and like, um, and it's just fascinating the uh, technologies that they'll be uh, using as part of this. Brilliant. Well, that's brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone who uh, submitted questions um, and engaged with uh, City and Stuart. And I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you both for such a fantastic presentation. So, so much detailed and a lot to think about and a lot of information there, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, don't forget, you can log this as your uh, CPD um, and you can do that um, via your uh, online CPD log. Um, please join us next time um, where we will be looking at uh, the latest in battery technology with Rotronics, which is next week. Um, as I mentioned before, the recording will be available from Monday and I will email everyone um, who attended today um, with City and Stuart's details along with that recording link brilliant cool. so we actually get to finish a little bit early today um and thank you everyone in uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and we hope to see you next time thanks Georgia. Uh, thanks everyone well, thank you everybody um and before that before we say goodbye finally i'd just like to finish off with a quote from our founder just to reflect the dedication that brembo have in producing the best in breaking which is thanks to emilio bambasi um, he has said that anyone can do simple things, but only a few can handle difficult ones, and we have to do the difficult ones. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you've enjoyed our little presentation. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye. See you. Bye.